If you look at every change that was made, was made by women who did not succumb. Nothing comes easy when it comes to the change of the power equation. I'm on my way to meet with Professor Batsheva Margalit Stern, who specializes in women's studies and modern Jewish history. She's gonna tell us about just how significant women were for the early Zionist movement. So, Professor, we're here talking about women in Israel specifically. I remember the heroines of our childhood, women that were the sort of epitome of valor, of sacrifice, hard work in the fields, fighting alongside the men. What was the reality of that? Women early on became equal in their status to the men members of the Zionist movement. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, when they wanted to translate this uh, formal equality into action, it was a little bit more complicated. The modern Zionist movement emerged in the late 19th century in Europe with waves of Jewish immigrations to pre-state Israel and the vision of an independent Jewish state. The Zionist revolution was about creating a new people, a new Jew, a new Jew in masculine. So where is the new Jewess? In order to create a new Jewish woman, the women had to design the new model. Mm -hmm. And indeed they did. The goal was to create a better society mm -hmm. for all. So women had to fight by convincing their colleagues that without changing, a new society is not going to be created. So it was a neutral interest for both men and women. What we see today is the results of their struggles early on. They designed a new Jewish woman, which was about being independent educated, having rights in all areas in life. When I look back at our history, everyone thinks about one person in particular, the woman who got to the top, Golda Meir. Golda Meir immigrated to pre-state Israel in 1921 and served as Israel's fourth prime minister from 1969 through 1974, at a time where women did not attain leadership positions, even in the most progressive of countries. Everything in our power we are going to do so that this time, it's the last war. She grew up in the United States. She got the idea of a modern society. When she immigrated to Eretz Israel, it was quite difficult for her. She had to make a living for her and her family in very dire conditions. But Golda was very keen of politics. The political arena was dominated by men. And Golda Meir really fought and maneuvered her way into this arena, and she succeeded. And she got all the way to the top. Yeah. Golda Meir becomes prime minister of the state of Israel. And this is, today it's easy to look back and say, oh, it's a linear and obvious progression. It was not. We were a state at constant war at the time, and still somehow a woman in Israel, which was a, a general-led country, manages to get all the way to the top. She gained power despite her being a woman. Yeah, she agree. did not gain power because she was a feminist. She gained power because she was a good soldier for the cause, a good and loyal member within her political circle. She never was a feminist in her own words. Mm -hmm. Even when she accepted feminist issues, did not fight in the political arena under the hat of a feminist. Does it mean that she was not sensitive to the specific problems women faced? Of course not. She herself faced some of the problems. Golda indeed broke the glass ceiling. She is a relic of this revolutionary Zionist movement that started the entire enterprise. But the question remains open. Did she pave the way for other women to follow her footsteps? Or did she not? Shalom and welcome back. Mati, it's so interesting to see this whole chapter of women, especially when we think about the the region that we are. Israel elevated the women to a place that when you look in the region, 
Yeah. There's nothing like that not, in the not region. Not very common at all. I think it's a very little known story how huge of a role women had in the early days of this country. Mm -hmm. You know, you look at the early Zionist movement, there were so many incredible and impactful women who were part of that, you know, early stage of this country. From biblical time till modern time, we see the role of the women, which is unreplaceable. Samuel, I think you're going to be surprised by how this movement looks today, by how important and unique the women who are acting in Israeli society are today. So you know what, Matty? Let's continue watching. More than any other woman in modern history, Golda Meir, the first female prime minister of Israel, shattered the glass ceiling. Typically speaking, leadership in this country is male dominant, but today, more than ever, women are fighting for their place in society to reach the top in every area of Israeli governance and leadership. I'm on my way to meet with Tanya, who's the CEO of the Dvorah Forum, which is an organization that has a goal of integrating women into male-dominated fields, but specifically into the national security decision-making positions. Tanya. Mati. Good to see you. You too. In Israel, a lot of the senior roles are based on your combat experience because the IDF is so central. That opens a ticket into businesses, politics, yeah. etc. If not all roles are open for women in the military to begin with, then you, you don't have the same starting point for promotion along the way. So the problem we present is there's an underrepresentation of women, specifically when it comes to security. Security is a huge deal for Israel for obvious reasons. People don't understand that this is important, so let's help them understand that it's important. It's not just people, it's decision makers. It's getting them to be more minded about the fact that, that women need to be full participants around the table. Phone Dvora was initially established in 2009 as a branch for the American Institute for Inclusive Security within the inspiration of UN Council Resolution 1325, which calls on women to participate in everything that has to do with women, peace, and security. It also acknowledges that women's experiences in conflict zones is quite different than men's, and for that reason, women need to be around the negotiation table as well. Part of our work is promoting policy and promoting our general agenda, which is gender equality and promoting more women in the fields of national security and foreign policy. And in the second aspect, it's creating a network of professional women who can actually take a seat at the table. So it's helping younger women become promoted into more senior roles. We want women to be full participants in everything that has to do with security, whether it's in a security establishment and in the IDF, in the Knesset, in the Israeli parliament, in order for them to also have an impact on decisions that affect their lives. The Dvorah Forum is making real progress where it matters most in this region, defense and national security. So it's no surprise that the organization is named after an incredible biblical trailblazer. Dvorah is completely a role model for us. She was a prophet, a judge, a statesperson, a military leader. Dvorah, or Deborah, is the only woman mentioned in the Bible who was a judge. She communicated directly with God and led Israel into a victorious battle, in which her female warrior, Yael, killed Sisera, the commander of the Canaanite army. She did it all. She was an incredible role model um, from what we read in the Bible, and definitely somebody we, we could still look up today. Has there been forward movement? Have there been positive changes? I think it is changing. I think men are understanding that better decisions are made if they have women also in the room with them. Within the last government, there were only four women direct generals in the various government ministries. Today, there's 10, and that's progress for sure. I'd love to stop saying, oh, she shattered the glass ceiling. I'd love there not to be any more firsts of. That would be my goal. Hi. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you too. Shall we? Lieutenant General Orita Dato, who mentors for the Dvora Forum, has shattered the glass ceiling for women in Israel many times over. You are a person of many first for women. H how did that happen? What is your story? Oh, my, I have a very simple story. I have two older brothers. Both of them have been serving in the military for a career, so I thought I wouldn't be there. I left the military after my basic service. I got married, I gave birth, but I felt something is not full enough. I'm not feeling that I'm doing my best. So I came back to the military, and I didn't know that I'm gonna be big. I was doing my job, and I got the position of commander of the main training base for women. And I said, okay, now it's the time for us to make a change. 
Since 1947, female soldiers in Israel served in the Women's Corps, a separate, isolated corps within the IDF. This meant fewer female positions and way less influence. But in the 1990s, thanks to Adato's vision, things would finally change. The change regarding women's service was from the point that we don't have the privilege not to fully utilize our human resource. And women in the military are 30%, and you have to fully utilize all the potential that you have. That was the first breakthrough because within a year or two, there were combat positions open for women, tank engineering, electricity, even truck drivers. And then I said, why do we need a different base for officer course for women, while there is a base for officer course for men? At the end of the day, they are doing the same jobs. Why should we train them separated? It's not easy for people to go against a cultural norm. It's not, not only easy. against cultural norm, but cutting your power. Because you essentially said, you, we you don't were, need my job. You have to be courageous to say, OK, I know what I am giving up, but I don't know what will happen later on. Adato radically reorganized the Women's Corps and is considered instrumental in what would come later, the dismantling of the Corps and full integration of female soldiers in the IDF. That was something for me, wow, we did it. We did it. Only with retrospect can you look back and say, I can see the bigger effect of this. You look at where the army is today, and you can see like there's this constant change year after year after year, where more and more roles are opening up for women. Things that for us were achievements now are obvious. It's a time for us, the senior women, to enable other women to be promoted for the sake of the state of Israel. The long lineage of strength and valor continues as the women of Israel press on tenaciously to ensure a just society for all, where each and every person's dreams can be attained. The achievements are here, and we can see them. Women have to make sure that they keep the achievements they gained due to the Zionist role models. We are creating role models for young women growing up now. We want to have the chance to impact policy, decision-making, our security. We want to have a say. Dream, dare, do. That's what I've done, and that's what we all should do. Hey, I'm Mati Shoshani, and thank you for watching the TBN Israel YouTube channel. We hope this video gave you greater understanding of Israel and her people. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. We'd love to hear from you, so be sure to share what you've learned and ask your questions and comments below. And invite your friends to join the conversation.